Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we're we'll doing question five of November 2023, question paper physical sciences paper one. And this is work energy and power. So let's go. They are saying, let us conduct an experiment to determine how the initial kinetic energy given to a trolley affects the distance the trolley moves on a rough horizontal surface. And Lena pushes the trolley of unknown mass until it reaches point A with kinetic energy, EKA. Right. The horizontal the horizontal distance traveled by the trolley before it comes to rest is then measured. See the diagram below. So, what they are saying is that these kids had this trolley sitting here, right? Yeah. So they want to conduct this experiment and see how how long will this trolley move. From its original position when given a certain amount of kinetic energy. Right? So at this point A here, they push this trolley here by different kinetic energies. Right? To see how long will it this how long will this trolley move from its initial position after it has been given certain kinetic energy. So you push it and see how long will it travel from its original position, which is the displacement. You will measure the displacement when it is given a certain amount of kinetic energy or when it is pushed by a given amount of kinetic energy. That's what the students are doing. They say, okay, giving this trolley certain kinetic energies to see how long will it travel on this rough surface. That's what they are trying to, 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 to discover. No problem. The experiment is repeated with the trolley moving on a rough horizontal. Sorry. The experiment is repeated with the trolley moving on the same horizontal surface, but different kinetic energies at point A. Right? So this experiment is done multiple times, right? But giving the trolley or pushing the trolley at different kinetic energy to see how long will it travel from its original position before it comes to rest because eventually you push it and it comes to rest at the end right so you have this initial kinetic energy there that you are pushing with and final kinetic energy you know that it must come to an end it must rest at the end of the day no problem the results obtained are shown in the graph below so now here are the results, you can see that. So here, when they, they push the trolley with six joules of kinetic energy, right? It traveled 1.5 meters, right? So when they pushed it 1 6, uh, by six joules of kinetic energy, the distance traveled, which is the displacement, is 1.5 meters. And then they doubled the energy the kinetic energy in which they are pushing the trolley with. Look at the distance. The distance doubled as well. And then the first energy was tripled. Look at the distance. The distance is tripled as well. That's what happened. So from this, you can see that it's clear that in this case, in what you have, that your initial kinetic energy is directly proportional to, to this distance traveled here. Because they are increasing at the same rate. You can see, you x6 into 1.5. This was doubled. Look at the distance, the distance doubled. Which means the, initial, the relationship between this of uh, initial kinetic energy and the distance traveled is directly proportional. Which means they are increasing at the same rate. That's what directly proportional means. So, just because something is increasing, the other ones increase as well. It does not necessarily mean they are directly proportional. Directly proportional means they are increasing at the same proportion, at the same rate. That's what I, I know or understood of the term. But no problem. So let's go. 5.1. They are saying now, ignore the rotational effects of the wheels on the trolley. 5.1. Draw a labeled free body diagram 
showing all the forces acti acting on the trolley during its motion after passing point A. Right? So, they want us to draw a football diagram of the trolley when it is traveling here. Right? So, this is, this is our trolley here. We know if it's, the, the trolley maybe is here, it's moving, it's sitting it's in this area. We know that there's a gravitational force, Fg. We know that there's a normal force, which is the force of the surface of an object. Normal force. And we know that there's frictional force. That's what we know. Those are the forces that we know. There's no applied force because when it's here, you're not constantly applying the force. You just give it a push at the beginning and observe the trolley as it moves. So when it's moving, it's, when it's moving on its own here, without the force being constantly there, because the force was just applied at the beginning to get it to set it in motion. Once it was in motion, the force was no longer there. So the object was just moving on its own. So these are the three forces that are there. Okay. So we move to the next question, which is 5.2. They are saying now, <clears throat> name the independent variable in this experiment. They wanted to, <clears throat> to name the independent variable in this experiment. Look, what you are doing here, right? You are, push, you are um, pushing this trolley repeatedly. So which means you are introducing kinetic energy to this trolley. Right? So you are pushing, you are introducing initial kinetic energy to this trolley. What are you investigating? You want to investigate the distance traveled. So your distance traveled, it is a dependent variable. What is it dependent on? It's dependent on the amount of kinetic energy that is introduced on your trolley or which is applied in your trolley. Look, when you apply the initial kinetic energy of six joules on this trolley, it traveled 1.5, it traveled 1.5 uh, meters. And then when you doubled that in kinetic energy, this which is the distance traveled also doubled to three meters. So the amount of distance traveled depends on the kinetic energy. Right? So, so in simple terms, this distance travel is the dependent variables. It depends on the amount on the amount of initial kinetic energy introduced. But this one is there. You sub you have it. It's not dependent on anything, you just apply it. So this is your dependent variable, this is your independent variable because the amount of initial kinetic energy on this experiment is not depending on anything. You are just giving it as you wish or in amounts that you want. So the, uh, the initial kinetic energy, kinetic energy, Initial kinetic energy is independent. In this case, what is it independent? What does it depend on? It depends on nothing. It's this one that depends on the initial kinetic energy. You have your initial, you dose or you give the initial kinetic energy in amounts that you want. So it's not dependent on anything. And then you can say now your distance traveled. Is dependent. Because it depends on the amount of kinetic energy that you inject. Because you can see that already proportional. Done. Let's move to the next question, which is 5.3. What are they saying? They are saying, state the work energy theorem in words. They wanted to state the what? The work energy theorem in words. You know, the work energy theorem say, states that the network done on an object, the network done on an object, is equal to the change in kinetic energy of that object. The net work done, because well, you know, 
a work net is called F net delta X change in EK, which is EK final minus EK initial. So to state the work net done on an object by the net force, because the work net is done by the is the work, work net is the work done by the net force. The net work done on an object by the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy of an object. That's what this thing says. It states that the network done on an object by the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy of an object. This is, as you see, what net done by the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy of an object. Okay. So you can say that what net is equal to F net times delta x called change in EK. Which is the network done on an object by the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy of an object. Done. Go to the next question. Which is 5.3. What are they saying at 5.3? They are saying calculate the mass of the trolley if the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the trolley and the rough surface is equal to 0.18. So calculate the mass of the trolley if the coefficient or the kinetic friction between the wheels of the trolley and the rough surface is 0.18. So we are told that uh, the, the coefficient of the kinetic friction is 0.18, right? So what do they wanted to find? They wanted to find the mass of the trolley. They wanted to find the mass of the trolley. So, you use the work energy theorem, which is this. You say that the work net is equal to change in kinetic energy. Right? What is the work net? Work net is equal to the net force times the displacement, which is equal to uh, change in kinetic energy, which means uh, EK final. Minus EK initial. Right? Then, net force, you know the net force, the sum of all forces working on the object. The sum of net force, the sum of all forces acting on the object. So in this case, our object is moving horizontally. So this is, these are our forces of interest. These two are just going to cancel out anyway. So there's no need to add all of them. Just focus on the ones that are parallel to the surface where the work is being done. So the only force doing the work here is frictional force. So the net force consists of frictional force only because there's nothing else also to add that is parallel to the surface. So frictional force so is going to be state a frictional force actually yes but it's kinetic times delta x is equal to ek final minus ek initial. You know how to calculate the kinetic friction. The kinetic friction is called what? The kinetic friction is called mu k m times delta x. This is the kinetic friction. No, the kinetic friction in this part is calculated like this. It's equal to the ek final minus the ek initial. No problem. Then. This is your normal force. But you know your normal force is equal to your gravitational force. Right? You can see. So you know that your normal force is equal to your gravitational force Fg, which is equal to Mg. So here, I told you, normal force is equal to Mg. So you say, okay, mu k n. The n is a normal force, which is Mg. Delta x is equal to ek final minus ek initial. So negative mu. What is mu? It's 0 0.18 uh, times mg. What is m? It's what is the mass of the trolley? So what we're looking for times g 0.8 times delta x. Do we have delta x? Yes, 
can help you, okay, X. You can take any of these distances up to you. So, if my blessing will take 4.5 here, you can take any of these. Take 4.5. So, we say delta X is 4.5. You can take any. It's equal to the change in kinetic energy. What is your initial can final kinetic energy? Your final kinetic energy is zero because at the end of the day, it comes to rest. So, you have my final kinetic energy, zero, minus your initial kinetic energy. So, because we have chosen our displacement to be 4.5, here is our displacement at 4.5. What is the what was the initial kinetic energy that was applied on the trolley in order to travel this distance? It was 18 joules. So we applied 18 joules of energy. This was our initial kinetic energy, our final kinetic energy, because at the end of the day, our thing came to rest. Then you solve for your your mass which you're looking for. So what do we do? It's negative 0 0.18 times 9.8 times 4.5. So this is negative 7.94 m divided by negative 7.94 divided by negative 7.94 m is equal to negative 18 divided by answer is 2.26 or 2.27 kilogram. So this is our mass of the trolley. Comes out at 2.27 kilograms. Done.